A Walk on the West Side, Remembering Riversdale. In 1903, the first settlement was established west of the tracks. Incorporated as a village in 1905, Riversdale followed the progress of the nearby town of Saskatoon and the village of Nutana, who were already well on their way. It wasn't until 1906 that Riversdale, along with Nutana, became a part of the larger community of Saskatoon. This new city had a population of 4,500 inhabitants. Today, Riversdale is located directly west of downtown, centered on 20th Street. Riversdale has been home to such historic buildings as the Roxy Theatre, first opened in 1930 and restored and reopened in 2005 after a 10-year closure. In 1914, the city cordoned off an area of the South Saskatchewan River near the present Riversdale Pool in anticipation of the construction of a community pool facility. Saskatonians seeking relief from the summer heat would frolic in the cold, murky waters of the South Saskatchewan until 1924, when the Riversdale Pool was officially open. Edelman's Department Store was the largest retail establishment in Riversdale during the early part of the century. However, its closure in 1974 marked the end of an era in the community. Other notable Riversdale structures are the Princess and Alexandra Schools, as well as the Alexandra Hotel. Today, considerable effort is being put into creating a cultural corridor linking Riversdale to the New River Landing Development and the Broadway District. In 1929, John A. built a handsome one-story brick structure at 433 20th Street West. He operated his hardware business from this location until 1948, when the business was taken over by Harry E. Ford. Ford, in turn, sold the business in 1952 to the United Grain Growers. The retail store established as a branch of the United Grain Growers was the only one operated by the company. It supplied hardware and farm supplies to the farming community who lived west of the city. In 1959, UGG Hardware was sold to Hickson & Morgan Electric Company Limited. The Alexandra was the furthest west of the Riversdale Hotels and had perhaps the shortest career as a hotel. It was built by Alexander C. Hosey on the corner of Avenue F and 20th Street to designs by the architect Neil G. McKinnon. When it opened in December of 1912, the four-story structure was an elegant affair. The main entrance faced Avenue F and opened onto a large rotunda. The four years it operated as a hotel were 1913 to 1916. In 1917, the Alexander Hotel passed into the hands of the Colonial Investment and Loan Company and was remodeled into an apartment block. The Dawson Block at 221 Avenue D South was advertised in the December 1929 year-end review in the Star Phoenix as the new home of the Dawson Electric Company. It was built by pioneer electrician Cornelius Dawson. Con Dawson, as he was known, had earlier worked as the first electrical engineer at the city powerhouse in 1908. Dawson worked for various companies before starting his own business in 1918, operating out of his home at 223 Avenue D South. Dawson operated his electrical contracting business from the Dawson block until his retirement in 1963. For a brief period, George Sackville and his sons operated a hardware and harness repair store in the Cahill Block at 302 Avenue A South near 20th Street. The business had been opened by Donald E. Ross before Sackville and his sons took over the hardware store. They carried a wide range of products advertising hardware, stoves and harness, window screens and screen doors, as well as refrigerators. Harness repair was a specialty. The business was short-lived. From its beginnings in late 1911 or early 1912 to 1915 when the firm no longer appears in the city directory.
The David W. Young Garage at 316 to 318 Avenue G South opened in 1912. David Young had come to Saskatoon in March of 1906 and worked as a machinist before opening his own repair service. He operated the garage until February 1918 when he died at age 35 following an operation for appendicitis. Mourning his death were his wife and four young children. In 1920, the garage was taken over by B. Heisman and F. G. Robertson. Frederick Robertson ran the garage until 1923. The address remained vacant until 1926, when it disappeared completely from the city directory. Winter at the corner of Avenue C and 20th Street shows piles of wood stacked at Percy Brecknell's coal and wood business. The business was short-lived. Percy, who came to Saskatoon in 1906, opened the business in 1912. With the outbreak of World War I, Percy, who had fought in the Boer War, enlisted, and the business passed into the hands of Rodwell and Merkley. Down the block, the longer-lived business of William Landa Carriage Works can be seen, as well as a portion of the Northern Planing Mill. Charles Austin Needham sits in the doorway of his bachelor shack on Avenue F. When C. A. Needham came west to Saskatoon in 1906, a shortage of accommodation forced him to room with J. C. Bell at the Western Hotel. Needham quickly proceeded to build a car roof shack on the lot he had purchased from Mr. Bell. After buying a table, chairs, bed, and a stove and cupboard, as well as linen, bedding, cooking utensils, and other sundries, Charles Austin Needham moved into his new living quarters on May 31, 1906. The first sand store in Saskatoon opened its doors in 1948 at 535 20th Street West. The idea of a store selling war surplus had originated with brothers Sam and Albert Cohn in Winnipeg in 1947. They named it SAN, Surplus Army, Air Force, Navy. The Saskatoon store in 20th near Avenue F, under the management of Meyer Gelfix, did not last long at this location. The year following its opening, the business moved to a small shop in the Canada Building. The sand did not return to 20th Street until 1956. The Bruce Block was the first permanent location of the West Side Library. Library service to the West Side was started in 1928 and rented quarters in the Tucker and Bate Building at 242 20th Street West. A year later, the library moved to new rented quarters in the Wiley Building at 415 20th Street West. In 1933, the library was once again on the move, this time across the street to 406 20th Street West. In 1939, rather than move once again to other rented facilities, the Library Board purchased the Bruce Block, located further down the street at 604 20th Street West, at the corner of Avenue F. The new branch opened to the public in May 1940. In 1954, the building was moved to a new location at Avenue J and 20th Street to make way for the construction of the OK Economy Store. In 1929, the Safeway chain entered the Saskatoon Grocery Market when they opened six stores in December of that year. Of the six stores, two were located on 20th Street West. This is Safeway Store number 303, located at 405 20th Street West at the corner of Avenue D. Designed by architect J. Melrose Morrison and built by Shannon Brothers Construction, the Safeway stores resembled one another in style of storefront and in their brick and tile construction. In 1942, Safeway moved across the street into a new building. The old Safeway store remained empty until 1946 when it became Liquor Board Store No. 3.
The Bell Block, at 521 18th Street West, first appears in the 1913 City Directory. Designed by David Webster, it was likely built and named after local contractor and builder A. W. Bell. Bell had been the contractor for a large number of residences in the, on the city's west side. In 1911, he had erected a planing mill nearby at 507 18th Street West. By the time the Bell Block appears, the planing mill is no longer listed. The original apartment block contained ten suites. This number would vary over the years. Harry Ross's handsome city grocery building at 500 Avenue G South did not survive long after its 1913 opening. Vacant during the years of the First World War, it reopened in 1918 under the ownership of Miss Caroline Henderson as Henderson's Grocery. A year later, the building was empty again. Hugh Gibson ran the store for a year before relinquishing the property to J.A. and W.H.C. Brody who renamed it the Rosedale Grocery. Although the name remained the same, ownership changed. In 1923, the building had become an apartment block known as the Bellevue Apartments, with its address now on 18th Street. By the 1940s, it was solely an apartment block. The Albany began its life known as the Iroquois Hotel. Built in 1905, it was described as one of the first real substantial buildings erected to the west of the CNR. By 1910, the hotel had changed its name to the Albany Hotel. Renovations in 1912 dramatically altered the appearance of the hotel. The plans for the renovations had been drawn up by the architectural firms of Story and Van Egmond in Regina and John Turner in Saskatoon. The hotel's original double balcony was removed and the front wall was moved out to 20th Street and a new facade designed. When architects Thompson, Daniel, and Coldhurst drew up the plans for Robert J. Berry's new hotel on the corner of Avenue B and 20th Street, this was how they envisaged it. The building, when it officially opened August 1, 1913, was somewhat different from the artist's rendering. The recession and tightening of the money market meant that only three of the anticipated stories were built. Prior to construction, the old Butler Hotel, which had stood on the site, was moved down the block to Phase Avenue B. It was connected to the new building and used as an auxiliary. Fire Hall No. 2, located at the corner of Avenue B and 21st Street, was built in 1911 at a cost of $43,587.64. Before it was built, Riversdale was served by the original fire tower, which had once stood on 3rd Avenue and had been moved to a location on the south side of 21st Street, between Avenue D and Avenue E. The new fire hall was an imposing two-story white brick structure surmounted by a tower. Almost twice the size of Fire Hall No. 1, it became the central fire hall with its dormitory, offices, and recreation rooms. It was the headquarters of the fire chief. The fire chief's horse, the fire hose wagon, the steamer, and the aerial truck shown were all kept there. Wesley Methodist Church traces its beginnings to November 1906 and a decision by 3rd Avenue Methodist Church to establish a mission in Riversdale. A building committee was struck and a wooden structure was erected on the corner of Avenue G and 19th Street. The original wood structure was incorporated into the large brick church constructed in 1911. A feature of the church was the gallery, which extended on two sides of the building. When the accordion doors between the church and Wesley Hall were open, the church and the hall became one large auditorium.
The chronic overcrowding of Alexandra School was addressed by the school board in 1911 with the construction of Princess School. The board arranged for the purchase of the frontage on 20th Street from the Baptist Church. Architect David Webster drew up plans for a ten-roomed brick school in a neoclassical style topped by an ironclad dome supported by freestanding pillars. The building contract was awarded to Bigelow Brothers, who had completely finished the school by Easter of 1912. The final cost of the building was $49,300, with an additional $4,267 spent on heating, plumbing, and ventilation. The Spears and Paul store at 201 22nd Street West on the corner of Avenue B was one of the largest commercial enterprises in Riversdale when it opened in 1908. The stock in this two-story brick building included groceries, crockery, clothing, boots and shoes, and other dry goods. Although named Spears and Paul after owners Alex Spears and John Edward Paul in 1908, John E. Paul was the manager, Spears having died earlier. The Spears and Paul General Store did not survive the Saskatoon boom. Listed by Henderson's in 1911, it did not appear the year following. The first school on the west side was Alexander School. As early as 1905, residents of Riversdale had petitioned for a school for the increasing number of children on the west side of the tracks. Architects H. S. Griffith designed a four-room school, which was ready for occupancy in September of 1907. Originally to be known as Riverdale School, the name was changed to Alexandra in honor of Queen Alexandra, wife of King Edward VII. The four classrooms of the newly constructed building were inadequate to accommodate the enrollment, and in 1908 a four-room addition was built. William Landis Carriage Works at 222 Avenue C South had become Landa Carriage and Body Works when the shop began servicing cars and trucks in the 1920s. From its early beginnings as a blacksmith shop making horseshoes, fixing wheels, and repairing buggies, the business would expand to include bodywork and painting in the 1930s. Throughout the years, the business would remain at, at its original Avenue C location and maintain its family connection. Construction of St. Thomas Presbyterian Church began in 1911 on land donated by Mrs. Thomas Copeland at Avenue H and 20th Street. The church's beginnings date to 1908 when Knox Presbyterian Church moved to establish a mission on the west side. The mission developed into a self-sustaining church of its own. Plans for the new church were drawn by Story and Van Eggman with contractor D. A. Black in charge of the work. By the fall of 1911, work on the structure was almost complete. At its opening, the church had a seating capacity for 550 persons without the gallery, which is to be added at a later date. Swimming in the South Saskatchewan River has always been a risky venture. In 1914, the city of Saskatoon provided a boomed area in the river near the old powerhouse at the foot of Avenue H to encourage safe bathing. Dressing rooms were provided for men and women and a wooden water slide was erected. The boomed area was closed in by ropes and covered a space of some 300 by 100 feet. It operated until the summer of 1923. In 1913, when he established Walters Cycle at 329 Avenue B South, Jack Walters, in addition to selling perfect Falcon and Pastime bicycles and repairing bicycles, was also the agent for Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Walters Cycle later moved to 332 20th Street West, but did not stay long at this address. With each move, W.N. Walters' line would expand. 
In 1919, the shop carried some eight different makes of bicycles, nine lines of bicycle tires, auto accessories and parts, as well as the motorcycle line. James Tucker and Joseph Bates established a partnership in the cleaning business in 1913 when they opened the Saskatoon Pantorium at 325 Avenue B South. They were advertised as expert cleaners, pressers, and furriers, with ladies' work as specialty. In 1917, the business moved to premises at 234 to 236 20th Street West. When Joseph Bates, who had enlisted during the First World War, Return, the company name was changed to Tucker and Bait. Under this name, they would provide dry cleaning for over 50 years. This postcard of the King Edward Hotel shows the original building as well as the later addition. The three-story structure with balconies was constructed at the corner of Avenue A and 20th Street by Henry Wilson in 1907. The 40-room annex to the west of the building was added in 1912 and housed a theatre on the ground floor. After a fire in the new addition, renovations to the buildings did away with the balconies and created a unified façade. Winter 1913 at the corner of Avenue H and 20th Street. St. Thomas Presbyterian Church, Alexander and Princess Schools, and the number two streetcar are visible. Streetcar service had been introduced in 1913. Route number two Pleasant Hill terminated at Avenue P and 20th Street. Route number four, the Avenue H stop, went from the corner of Avenue H and 20th Street south to 15th Street. In 1914, the car lane had been extended almost to the bank of the river to assist those going to the new bathing station. A Walk on the West Side, Remembering Riversdale, was originally a gallery show in 2000, curated by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of local history room staff. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.